Welcome to Reality Creative Video. I'm Hermes, and I'm going to talk about some of the equipment I got here in the laboratory. First thing I want to talk about is my video microscope. I picked up the video microscope so that I could see what was going on in the colloidals. Um, I wanted a way to measure parts per million, or at least see what was going on on an you know, inner level, on a level here. And I, I remembered, you know, with the laser, we do the laser trick. We take the laser and we point it through the material and see the laser as it goes through the material. And I said, you know, I bet if I had a microscope and I pointed the laser through some liquid, I bet you I could um, see what's going on with a closer. The colloidals, the laser lights up the colloidals, would enable me to see the reflected light from these particles. And, it, and um, so, I mean, I can't measure the size of the particles, but I can get a really good idea from the reflected light coming back, uh, how many different sizes there are, how compact they are. Um, the information that I've gained since I got the microscope is absolutely fantastic. So what I want to do is show you guys how to use the microscope. Now, we're going to take some colloidal silver. And I'm going to put 30 milliliters of it in this little beaker here. Just enough so I can put a laser through it. Then we're going to put this underneath the microscope like this and this is a laser okay handheld laser one of the high power ones now you want to be very careful with these things or you could lose your eyes uh, i've constructed this little thing over here captures the laser light so that it doesn't reflect all over the room um, because you don't want it in your eyes now when i set this thing up I wear my way cool reality creative video glasses, okay? Because I don't want to get any chances because when you push this button, you've got laser going all over the place. So um, we put the laser in the vise over here and we tighten the vise a little bit and we aim it just so that the uh, laser is got the stuff going right through there. Um, I will actually take a, I'll take a picture of, a close-up picture of this so you can see it. Anyway. And then, we go, then I take the, once, once that is done, I take the glasses off. There's danger, is a minimum now of the laser. And then we're going to zoom down into the mix so you can see it start coming into focus here. And there we go. We got particles as you can see we got real-time actual video of the particles this is colloidal silver at 15 parts per million somewhere between 15 and 18 parts per million um, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like that I've come come to look at it uh, after seeing it for a whole a long time and lo large particles small particles a whole kind of bit so this has helped me a whole lot with uh, what I'm going to talk about in a future, in a video that's coming up, I'm going to probably shoot that video tonight too, about aggregation. And we'll get to that later. But anyway, this piece of equipment was practically invaluable for, is becoming invaluable for me learning about colloidals and everything that's uh, going on there. So, you'll see more of this as time goes on. Now, let's take you to the next piece of equipment I want to show you. Okay, another important part of my equipment is the power supply. That's right up here. I'll show you a close-up picture of that. That is a 0 to 60 DC power supply. From It provides up to about 5 amps of power. Um, I only need about 400 milliamps tops, 300 milliamps. Um, so it's more than adequate. Uh, I need the 37.5 volts is what I use. Uh, you don't have to use 37.5. It just cooks faster. That's basically anything between 32 and 38 volts is usually uh, adequate for, for cooking. 
the colloidals. The current is what's more important when you're cooking colloidals, but uh, low voltage also is going to lower the current that you're going to get in the solution. So the higher the voltage, the more current you can actually get through the solution, which kind of works out better for colloidal silver and zinc, which are very low current batches, cooking batches. So uh, that's on Amazon. You can get that on Amazon. Now down here is my stirrer and heater. Very important piece. And uh, now if you looked at my older videos, you saw that brown one. That was a $30 stirrer. I had gotten that because I needed it for, to do the make the colloidal gold. Didn't want to invest the $250, $260 for the better stirrer. If, if it wasn't going to work out. So I figured, ah, trying to keep costs down in the beginning. So I went with that $30 stirrer, which worked fine. I cooked my first few batches of colloidal gold uh, with that stirrer. This is the top that I made. Okay, before we get into the stirrer. I printed this on my 3D printer, which is over here. That's out of the camera right now, but I'll show you a picture of that. And I designed it on... Um, uh, I think it's called Thinkercad on the on the internet. I'll uh, find out the proper name and post it up there. Um, you go in there, you design your 3D thing, whatever you want, and then you print it up. So that's what I did. This has the two holes for the rods that go in here, and you'll see this is the uh, inside of it. Okay, um, and this sits on top here, and all it does is it keeps the rods nice and straight. Um, you can just you can just tie them in there any way you want. But I had the 3D printer and I love using all of my gadgets when I can when I keep when I got them. So anyway, you fill this beaker with with the distilled water and you that would take the temperature probe. All right, I'm not doing any distilled water right now, so I can't show you, but I could just give you the idea. This goes probe goes into the water. Then the dial, this dial here is for temperature. You turn it up to whatever temperature you want. And this is for the spinning, the little spinner. This, I call it a magnetic stirrer. Okay. And you've seen this on my other videos. This is the little magnetic bullet. Goes down in here. Watch. See, it just stuck, sticks to the bottom. And that will <coughs> turn. And when it turns, it mixes the water. I don't know if it'll turn. Yep, see, it'll even turn without water in it. See, it's turning. So when it turns, it keeps the water going. That's the magic of the spinner. All right, so you would dial in the temperature that I want here, and I would let it cook to get to the, reach the temperature. Now, I have used the microwave to bring my colloidals up to temperature. I don't like using a microwave or not because it scrambles the frequencies or anything like that. Basically, I have to carry the hot water with the beaker tongs. These are beaker tongs. From the microwave over here to the tray. And I don't like the chance of having to drop that thing, which would be terrible. Also, flash heating the glass on the beakers, as I don't think, is so good. Now, I had a problem with the beaker... There are two different kinds of glass with beakers. There's lightweight glass and there's heavyweight glass. Now this, this is a Pyrex 1003 heavy duty glass beaker. The glass is much thicker, so it can handle much more abuse. Now in the beginning, I didn't want to go for the extra cost of the Pyrex one, which uh, my chemistry uh, um, advisor said I should get this, but I went and got cheaper uh, Carter beakers, which are the same kind of glass, but thinner. And what happened was, after cooking several batches um, in, these, in these Carter ones, I had one explode on me. Uh, luckily, there was nothing in it. All I was doing was fitting the top to the unit, and it just blew apart. It was like someone had exploded the atoms inside the thing. And I talked to the uh, chemistry specialist and she said that's what they do. The thinner glass ones, they can't take the heat. And so um, eventually they just explode. And I said, wow, well, I wish you would have impressed upon me that um, in the beginning. 
But anyway, as I picked up the heavier duty beakers, and that's all I use. And I try and stress them as little as possible so I don't microwave them because I don't want flash heating them. So I will let the stirrer, it might take a 20 minutes to get this thing up to the temperature that it needs to go. Um, for silver, it's about 60 degrees C, and that doesn't, that isn't too bad. Um, for gold, it's 92 degrees C, almost boiling. So that could take a little while to do that. But the temperature probe here makes it a lot easier. I stick it in the water, I dial in the temperature that I want, and, uh, that's it. I can walk away, go play some video games for a while, and let the temperature come up. And then when it's stabilized, I do my thing with this. Very, I have to say that this helped immensely with my pr production. The other stirrer was nice, but didn't have the temperature probe feature, so I had to dial up the temperature. And then I used um, my infrared thermometer. It would go like this. It would tell me the temperature of the water. So if we had water in there, it would be 27.4 degrees Celsius. Uh, right now. So um, I still do check to make sure with the infrared. If you've seen my videos, I always check in the temperature, even though the probe is in there, to do the dirty work there. And um, that's it. That's my uh, that's my tour of the few pieces of equipment that I have here. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Hermes. This is Reality Creative Video, and I will talk to you again soon.